Hello and welcome from Israel Leom Studio. Joining us today, former ambassador Yoram Mettinger. Hello and thank you for joining us. Thank you. There are reports that Kerry threatened Abbas uh, with holding U.S. finance if he doesn't agree to sit with Israel. Uh, do you believe uh, that it says something about all of the peace talks? Oh, absolutely. It means that the U.S. is determined to learn from history by repeating rather than avoiding past mistakes. Uh, so far, the U.S. transferred to the Palestinian Authority in excess of four billion uh, dollars, in addition to a few more billion dollars from the international community. It hasn't made peace closer. However, it has funded the most vicious hate education, education system anywhere in the Middle East. It has financed terrorism, has financed non-compliance by the Palestinians. And therefore, the U.S. should deal with the peace process by uprooting the obstacles of hate education rather than funding it through foreign aid. We're talking about 85 prisoners that Israel should release. What do you think about it? Before talking. Well, uh, releasing prisoners is the wrong term. We're talking about terrorists. We're talking about some of the most outrageous, uh, egregious acts of terrorism in uh, modern human history, there is no doubt that releasing a uh, terrorist would only embolden future uh, terrorists. And Israel, in this case, should learn from the U.S. The U.S. does not negotiate over prisoners, terrorists held in U.S. prisons. Israel should do likewise. The U.S. doesn't even think about releasing Jonathan Pollard, unfortunately. And here, Israel is expected to release the most, some of the most outrageous terrorists. But most importantly, it sheds light on the so-called partner Mahmoud Abbas. What does it mean about Mahmoud, Mahmoud Abbas values when he insists on releasing outrageous, egregious uh, performers of terrorism rather than condemning them? On your opinion, could Israel resist an international pressure when we're talking about 1967 lines? Well, certainly uh, there wouldn't be Judaism or Jews today if Jews would not have defied pressure for the last few thousand years. If you look at the last 65 years, modern day uh, Israel, it has been defiance of pressure, which facilitated some pivotal developments in our history. Uh, the founding father Ben Gurion declared independence in defiance of an American military embargo and a threat of economic embargo. Prime Minister Eshkol reunified Jerusalem and built in Eastern Jerusalem in defiance of American uh, pressures. Mr. Prime Minister Begin applied the Israeli law to the Golan uh, Heights by defying American pressure, suspending joint exercises, suspending trans transfer of military systems to Israel. And if not for defiance of terrorism, we wouldn't have today over 200,000 Jews in Eastern Jerusalem and almost 400,000 Jews in settlements in Judea and Samaria. And do you think uh, the settlements will be a time bomb, maybe? Well, the settlements have never been an obstacle to peace. Uh, we're talking settlements which were established, have been established since 67 in the 20th, 30th and 40th. Arabs were trying to obliterate Jewish presence in that time in pre-independent in pre, uh, Israel. Uh, the War of 49, the War of 56, the War of 67 erupted before there were Jewish settlements in Judea and Samaria. And certainly when it comes to uprooting settlements and peaceful coexistence, this is a classic oxymoron. Uh, should Israel insist? on uprooting Arabs residing within pre-67 Israel? Absolutely not. Should Israel insist on Arabs in Israel desisting from construction? Absolutely not. And therefore, the idea of punishing Israel by uprooting Jews and ending construction does conflict with peaceful coexistence and the pursuit of peace. Yo, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for watching.